Hey y'all, it's Tronicle, and you might be wondering why I look like this. I was doing my hair and I realized that I had recorded a video where I talked to you guys about how I go through finding the perfect journals for myself and for my content. And I didn't like the end result and I was sitting here doing my hair and I figured why not sit down and do a chit chatty wash and go with you guys. So if you don't know what a wash and go is, I'll just give you like a very, very small inkling of what it is. Basically, it's what black people call wearing our hair in its natural curl pattern. So as you can see, this is what my hair naturally looks like. So that's just basically what it is. Um, I'll just show you guys what I'm using too, just in case any curly girls want to know. I am using the Honey Hydrate by Camille Rose. And also by Camille Rose is this curl maker. So let's just get into it, shall we? So one thing I always do when I am looking for journals or originally when I was looking for journals because I've pretty much narrowed down the journals I want. And those two are a six ring binder and a traveler's notebook. Though this tend to be my favorite two these days. Not saying that that cannot change because I am all for new things, which is probably not a good thing all the time. But one thing I always look for, and I think this is something super important, is GCM. Um, real quick, I was editing this video. So um, GCM is actually a radiology place in Maryland. I don't know why I said GCM. I definitely meant GSM. Just ignore me. I don't know what I was thinking about. Just I, in my defense, I had to call the doctors and that might be why I thought of GCM. GSM is what I was trying to say. Okay, bye. And GCM can be very important, especially when you are doing any type of journaling that involves markers or um, watercolors and stuff like that. Knowing the paper weight, which is all it really is, is paper weight, will help you immensely. The higher the GSM, the less likely you will see bleeding, which can and cannot be a good thing, which or may or may not be a good thing. It's a good thing for things like, for instance, if you're doing a bullet journal and you rely a lot on heavy markers, you may want a higher GSM. That way you will reduce the amount of bleed through you have. If you have something with a GSM of like 80, you will more than likely have not only bleed through, but it's going to bleed through and it's just going to mess up the whole, you, you don't want to spend money on stuff and then all of a sudden realize that you can't use your supplies. However, on the opposite side of that, a GSM that is too high could actually not accept, I don't know if I'm saying this right, cannot, may not accept the markers or the paint, etc. that you're using. When GSMs are too high, I, was that in this part? It doesn't feel like anything on the other one. When GSMs are too high, for instance, if you put watercolors on it, the watercolors may actually just slide right off. They may not work, they may not take to the paper. You may find that your markers take a little bit too long to dry and they may sit on top of the paper if the GSM is too high. My suggestion for that is that there are a lot of videos on YouTube with journal comparisons where people will take watercolors, um, oil paint, acrylic paint, all those things and put them on to certain journals. So if you want to try a Loistrum, there are probably videos of people putting watercolor on Loistrums. If you want a moleskin, they have them for that. They have them for dingbats. Literally every single journal you can think of that is super popular on YouTube, they probably have a journal comparison video for. And I find those very helpful, especially depending on what you're using it for. If you know you're going to use heavy stuff in your journal, looking at comparison videos like that, especially ones that talk heavily about bleed through, 
and GSM and all that stuff, I think will be very, very helpful. Now, talking in regards to myself, I, I needed higher GSM back when I was doing a reading journal. When I was doing a reading journal, GSM was very important to me. However, now that I no longer do a reading journal, I find that I am less inclined to particularly care about the GSM because a reading journal is basically like a bullet journal in some cases, in some sense. Only difference is you're not really like, you're telling yourself what you're gonna read and not necessarily what you're gonna do throughout the week, right? But since I no longer really use reading journals, I don't tend to care about GSM and slightly because for my six ring binder, I do tend to use markers, but my markers are never like so thick and so heavy that I have a problem with bleed through. And for me, even if I want to use a Sharpie for the inserts of my six ring binder, all I end up doing is just writing whatever words on with that pen or marker on a separate sheet of paper and then pasting it onto the insert. That way I don't have any bleed through, I don't even have to write on the paper. So, you know, so I don't tend to worry about GSM anymore. And as far as my inserts for my traveler's notebook, I make all of my inserts myself. And most of the GSMs are pretty high. I'd say I don't particularly go towards GSMs that are lower than 90. And that is just a personal preference. So the next thing I looked for in journals is also pricing. Pricing is very important to me, which you may be like, it's very funny coming from someone whose favorite journals are two super expensive ass journals. And they are. But here's my thing about Traveler's Notebooks and Six Ring Binders. The reason they are perfect for me is because they allow inserts, meaning there is not a set number in the covers of each journal that are there. So like for instance, if you buy a moleskin where moleskins typically have, what do they have like 150 or 160 pages in them? That's whatever their standard number is. I'm honestly not sure, I can't remember. But that is a set in stone number. They are sewn bound together journals so you can't add or subtract anything because once you start subtracting, once you start removing, ooh, my glasses. Once you start removing pages from bound journals, they start falling apart. And you could be like me and use an expensive ass archer and olive and then decide that you're not liking it and rip them out and then super glue them together. But that is super, that's just, it was a lot. And I would not suggest doing that because archer and olive is super fucking expensive. But yes, that is a major thing that I love about both Travelers and Six Ring Binders. They just tend to help me pick and choose how much I want in each one. I know that if I do want to have maybe 200 sheets in one cover, then I can. And the inserts are far easier to make than it is to have to rebuy a journal because I can fit like, even in my A5 six ring binder, I can fit like over 200 pages of grid paper into the binder. So that is just something that is a personal preference. You need to figure out your preferences, things that you want in the journal and write them down. Because if you don't care about paper weight, like let's say you aren't using watercolors, let's say you're not using heavy pens and markers, then you may not care about GSM. And if you do not care about mess ups, which is like something that I find to be very helpful about the cream binders, is if I don't end up liking something, I can just go and remove it. I don't have to rip it out and mess up its binding. 
then you may not care about having a Supreme binder. Now, like I said, the pricing for both six ring binders and traveler's notebooks can be pricey because you are not only buying the covers, you have to buy the covers and a lot of times the inserts. And if you go the original way, which is the traveler's company, they're pretty pricey. Or if you use Muji, they're pretty pricey. And that's the one thing I will say about those two is that at the end of the day, you might not want or care about the sense that they hold more if you can buy a Loistrum or a Moleskin or a Dean Bat as a one-time purchase and it may last you quite some time. Meanwhile, for things like traveler's notebooks and stuff, honestly, it depends on where you get them, who you get them from, where they're shipping from. A lot of six ring binders people like are the Luca Labs and I'm pretty sure they'll ship from Korea and that can take a while to get you know you have to deal with shipping and all that stuff there are some that are not on Luca Lab but I know a lot of people like Luca Lab because they have really cute inserts and front covers that just come pre-made but that's where things get pricey and I'm not the type of person who likes that how did I miss this one part right here so that is all up to the person as far as monetary value goes because I can't tell you what's expensive for you because honestly for me back in the day I probably wouldn't have spent more than ten dollars on a journal which is kind of hard because journals are expensive especially nice journals Okay, so now I'm going to go into some more tips and not necessarily just what I use as a, you know, way of finding journals because you may not share the same things in specs that I do. Something else you may want to look for is customization of the journal itself. And what I mean by that is, it's for instance, if you've ever seen a Dingbats journal, they have wildlife inspired journals. So what I mean is I have a Dingbats journal. I swear to God, I have like every journal that's ever been in existence or popular on YouTube. I have a Dingbat and my Dingbats is a tiger. And so it's like this really pretty orange journal with a tiger in front. And then if you go on the inside front cover, it has the paw prints of whatever animal you choose. It has a little pocket in the back. It comes in different colors. You can get different animals. And I think they actually have like a, it's wildlife and then I think it's like plants or is it trees? I don't know, I can't think of what the other versions are called because I only like the, okay, I'm not gonna say that I only like the animal ones but I've only ever bought the animal ones. Okay, I'm going to be blind for maybe about five minutes. So things like that, Loistrums I know come in different colors. I think scribbles that matter come in different colors. I don't know, cause I've never bought one. It's like one journal that I know I've never bought. But that might be something that you wanna look into because not all journals come in varying colors. Some people tend to just like basic black journals. Other people may want some real customization of journals, which is why I think one of the greatest things about journaling is, is that you can literally go to the dollar store. And if you find a cute ass journal at the dollar store, then you have a cute ass journal at the dollar store. It'll be something that most people probably won't even have. You may think because it's the dollar store that everyone's gonna have it, but I can assure you that I have seen journaling videos where I'm just like, oh my God, where did they get that journal? And they got it from like, I don't know, a dollar store around their neighborhood or like TJ Maxx, which also has really great journals or stuff like that. So you don't have to rely on like super popular brands. I also think that if you are just starting out with journaling and you don't have the finances to get a journal, then I think a really good, I'm gonna do this side next because I need to put my glasses back on and I need to get the hair away from my ears first. But I think 
that if you're worried about monetary issues, then it's always great to just start off small. Because all of my journals that I had as a kid were definitely not like 15 plus dollar journals. They just weren't. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about are journal sizes because there are lots of journal sizes out there. I put way too much product over here. I will put up the journal sizes right now, but the journal sizes I tend to choose and I think a lot of you will see, especially on Instagram and Tumblr and YouTube, is a lot of people tend to go for either A5s, A6s, or a lot of people in the traveler's journal world like um, passport sizes. And I think standard is what a lot of people use for traveler's notebooks. I don't know why I couldn't say that. Also, you need to know that sizes kind of vary so if you have a journal that has inserts in them then you need to make sure that you're measuring right because I know for my six ring binder I wasn't paying attention and I got some inserts that were the correct American size but then I ended up having some craft paper inserts that were a little bit maybe like an inch bigger which kind of annoys me but I've learned to get used to it because there's so many and I am queen of I don't feel like taking that back so that's always something you want to pay attention to a5s tend I don't have I, my hands I don't have my journals with me but a5s tend to be wider they're probably about this wide and about this high they're more box looking if that makes sense while a6s are more slim they're more like probably if you see people doing k-pop journals a lot of people tend to get a6s for k-pop journals not saying everybody but a lot of them tend to be a6 size and that's again personal preference i like them both i find that for my k-pop journal i really like the smaller ones so either passport sizes or a6 are what i go for but when I'm doing my personal junk journaling, I really like A5s. And with picking journals, it's honestly a lot of just figuring out personal taste and what you want from each journal. Like I said, something that was important to me was that I could rip stuff out. And with a six ring binder, I don't have to rip it out. And with a traveler's notebook, it's just stapled together so I can just rip it out. And it's not messing up any binding. It's not going to completely fall apart and it, those are things that I could literally go buy grid paper and cut up myself which I have done for my traveler's notebook but those are things that are important to me I think that what's important to you will be different to each person and it may help to write down things that you want it may help that you find different journals that have different specs. Some journals will have things that others do not. And it's a lot of just trial and error. Finding journals, testing them out, and then seeing if you like them. I know I tried out the Barnes & Noble Traveler's Notebook and I hated it so much. It was so agitating. I still have the cover and I use the inserts for other things, but it was just so bad. I hated it so much. But that's just something you have to kind of do. It's unfortunate because you can't always go by what YouTubers, Instagrammers, anybody says about them because until you figure it out, you won't know for sure if it's for you or not. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over about my selection in journals. So I'm just going to finish up my hair and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're all done. This is what my hair is looking like. I'm gonna go blow dry it because I'm not waiting eight hours when it's like 10 o'clock at night for this to dry and I'll get back to you. Okay, so it's honestly, it's the next day. I'm wearing a different shirt and everything. Um, this is how my hair is looking. The shrinkage is insane because my hair is actually 
here right now. But first day hair always shrinks. Also, I feel like my hair could use a trim because the endings, the ends of my hair are actually supposed to be spirals, but they're actually like dead. So that you could probably, you know, get cut. I don't like hair in my face, so I'll probably just, there we go. Wear my hair like this for the rest of the day because I don't like hair in my face. But yeah, so this is where I'm looking like right now. I also didn't use products I would use on a day-to-day -day basis, though the gel was my sister's and she has looser hairs than me. And the Honey Leave-In is like one of my favorites, but I didn't pair it with anything I would normally pair it with. So honestly, this is as good as it's going to get. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you got some things that maybe you didn't think of to find a journal that is perfect for you and what you're trying to do with your journaling. If you did, then great. If you did not, I'm sorry. This is just how, this is just my process and I can't speak for everybody. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, or if you have tips for people leave them in the comments hope you enjoyed this if you enjoyed this there will be videos here and here for you to check out and don't forget to follow me on instagram and until next time later guys